Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, je vais commencer par um, dire bienvenue à, à les étudiants, les représentants des, des étudiants et leurs leur syndicats. Je ne peux pas vous voir, mais j'espère que vous êtes là et merci pour être là aujourd'hui uh, pour écouter uh, le débat. <rire> et uh, uh, merci, Monsieur le Président, pour l'opportunité de prendre la parole pour débattre à uh, cet enjeu ici, c'est très important. Um, et même si um, nous ne sommes pas ici, je veux aussi dire, um, uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Masu, the, the folks at the Mount Allison Student Union. Uh, Mount Allison University is in my riding. And, uh, and I know that, that these issues uh, touch many of my constituents. Um, before, um, getting into what I was going to say and what I can add to this debate. Uh, I think it's interesting to hear both sides um, going after each other, accusing each other, for example, of not um, consulting widely on, on certain programs. And I don't say this very often, but I think you're both right. Um, <laughs> and, and I think that that is a really important piece of what we hear students saying is, please consult us, please talk with us. And, the, the EI Connect uh, is an example, and, and I heard what the minister said about, uh, well, that it wasn't the, the appropriate program, okay, but the way that, that without a proper transition in place, without consultation and without that communication, that, that wasn't the, the right way to go about it. And so I, I hope that, you know, there's recommendations even in the in their, their asks for the MBSA, for example, um, for consultation. And so I hope that that gets taken to heart because I think that that's, that's essential, that we're, this is what it's all about. We're talking about um, students. Um, I do think there's an opportunity. I know I won't get to use all my time today, but there's an opportunity for us to really think about what this motion could mean. If we look at, at what it says, um, to bring forward a comprehensive assistance program to support access to post-secondary education. We could dream big. That, that could mean a lot of things. Um, and I heard the Minister of Petal say earlier, um, we should have uh, you know, these institutions be as accessible as possible. Well, I just want to, to share some of the, the other places in the world where they have really looked at how to make it as accessible as possible. I think of Norway, where tuition is reduced or free for citizens and international students. Sweden, where it's free for uh, citizens and European students. Germany, where the majority of, of the, the education is still free at that level. I could go on Denmark. <laughs> Uh, Finland, Austria, it's very close to free. Uh, Greece, it's free. France, very low. Uruguay, Brazil, Argentina, Panama, <laughs> Malaysia, Morocco, Egypt, Kenya. So we're, we're looking at these examples of other places where they have decided that post-secondary education is a public good, that it is worth investing in this common good and thinking of the education system beyond K to 12. And I think that's where we need to go to encompass pre-K and post-secondary education, to not cut it off with the grade schools, but think about how to make sure that there's high quality, accessible education for everyone. And, and that is really where we need to be going, Mr. Speaker. And I, I think part of the, the value in thinking about it this way, again, dreaming big, making sure to quote the minister that anyone who wants to attend has the opportunity to attend, um, that this is about, again, the, the common good, that this is uh, important for our society. Um, of course, it helps prepare students for employment. Um, and can respond to those needs, but treating students as something beyond just economic units. And I think that's, that's really essential. Um, there's been a lot of talk about uh, upfront costs, and, and of course, that is, that is really what I'm talking about. Another piece is really the equity, 
There are things beyond just the tuition, though tuition has been rising quite a bit. It's quite expensive for students. It's, it's difficult for them to make ends meet. Um, but there are other things in addition to making sure that universities are financially uh, accessible um, that are really important to support access as, as we're discussing today. And these include housing, Mr. Speaker. Housing is a major issue for many students. I know in my community, but other places in the province as well. What does it look like to be able to afford, uh, afford housing um, and find housing? And even one of the recommendations from the NBSA was to extend the rent cap, Mr. Speaker. Um, looking at access to health care, uh, I think there's, there's some discussions that should be had here because um, it seems universities are being called on to provide more and more health care and mental health care. And I look to our, our public system and, and think, you know, where is that line and, and what, um, how do we make sure that students have, have all the access to health care that they need? Um, I, I think of you know seeing signs when I'm on campus for for the food bank. There are students who who can't make ends meet, who don't have enough to eat, Mr. Speaker. And so that is really what we're talking about. Some of the other recommendations. Si on regarde ce que Fécum demande, qu'on a des des stages payés pour assurer que les, les étudiants qui travaillent dans les stages, qui reçoivent leur euh, éducation dans, dans cette manière, dans le fin de, de, de programme, qu'ils reçoivent un paiement pour, pour ça. Et ça fait de bon sens. C'est un, 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 un outil pour euh, la rétention, le recrutement. Et uh, je suis d'accord avec eux. J'appuie uh, l'appel de, de FECUM, leur, leur demande. Um, I look at um, the other things that the NBSA um, is calling for. Uh, and there are many things. I, I've already brought up mental health. They're calling for investments in mental health care. They're calling for investments in equity, diversity, and inclusion to um, actually have action plans around that, Mr. Speaker. They're calling for uh, coordinated and comprehensive uh, plans and, and the, the associated funding um, around addressing and preventing sexual violence on campuses, uh, Mr. Speaker. Again, housing is a, is a key issue. They called for the rent cap to be extended. They're talking about international students, and again, not treating students as just economic units. Uh, they are people, uh, and one of the stressors for international students, not only do they have high tuition fees, their tuition fees are very unpredictable. What if there was stability? They knew when they signed up for a four-year program what they were going to be paying. We could do that, Mr. Speaker. Um, and then, of course, in ensuring there's adequate funding of our public institutions, of our universities. Uh, we've seen the proportion of, of government funding towards our public institutions go down over time, Mr. Speaker. We've seen tuition uh, be one of the things that, that makes up some of that gap. But making sure that the, the operational funding for these universities is stable and consistent and adequate, making sure that the universities have the funds to adequately hire staff. And there, we know that about a third of the staff being hired to teach in universities are, um, are part-time and interim, and, and they, they're precarious. I know of some of them who have like nine contracts in a row, and they're not getting hired full-time, Mr. Speaker. This, this contributes to the, the type of education, type of environment students are, are receiving. And so again, as my time winds down, Mr. Speaker, I encourage us to, to dream big and to think about what it would mean to make our universities as, as accessible as possible. What would it mean for universities to not have deferred maintenance budgets that are extremely stressful? Uh, what would it look like to, to take care of that infrastructure on a more consistent basis? What would it look like for students to not be having to go to the food bank and not be stressed about uh, finding somewhere to live, but rather focused on their studies, focused on the engagement that they bring to the community? I know having grown up in Sackville, students 
students play a huge part in our communities when they, they come to live with us and sometimes they, they stay, which is always wonderful, Mr. Speaker. Alors, um, on sait que les coûts mentent, les frais de scolarité mentent, et on peut faire mieux, Monsieur uh, le, pr le Président. On, on pourrait assurer que uh, les, les études uh, postsecondaires sont plus accessibles, mais uh, c'est un choix uh, de, de ne pas investir davantage dans nos, nos, nos étudiants, nos étudiantes, uh, nos universités et collèges, uh, et on peut faire mieux. Alors, Mr. Speaker, it is a choice uh, that we, that this government makes, that successive governments make, um, around where we're going to invest, if we are going to invest in making sure that education is accessible. Um, and again, I talked about um, making sure that pre-K is accessible. I would encourage us to look at post-secondary education and make sure, Mr. Speaker, that every student that wants to study is able to.